In our last program, we came across the term electrophile, electron liking. And we can recall that the substances that have electrons available in p orbitals, this pi bond here, these are the electrons that tend to attract electrophiles. So what I'm showing here is a molecule, let's say has a carbon, carbon, and there might be hydrogens attached here and here. This is a picture of really what we think of when we draw the ethene molecule. So we have to keep in mind that that double bond is essentially composed of a sigma bond and a single pi bond, which exists of two lobes above and below the molecule. And these are what are subject to attack in electrophilic addition. So if I have a substance that has a double bond in it, and R could be a hydrogen or any carbon chain, and I bring along a substance, perhaps hydrogen bromide, it could be a halogen, what will happen is that double bond will open up and we will then have substances X and Y hook up to the molecule, removing the single bond, a double bond, leaving a single bond, and we might get a molecule with this kind of structure. We saw this before in the standard level chemistry. We called these addition reactions. What we want to look at now is the mechanism by which they happen. Again, focusing on how the electrons move. Let's start with, say, ethene and a halogen like bromine. What I'm going to show you here is kind of how the reaction takes place. The bromine approaches our substance that has that double bond in it. Now what that does, remember that we have essentially electrons above and below the plane. These repel the electrons that are in this nearby bromine, forcing the electrons down this way, making this a slightly negative bromine and this a slightly positive bromine. Now that then allows for the formation of a bond. One of these um, pairs of electrons will open up and essentially attach itself to that slightly positive bromine and the electrons that are present in this bond will break. So here's how we show this in a diagram. We start off with our starting material. I'll show it like this. And I'll show my bromine connected to bromine. Now, as mentioned, one of these pairs of electrons will open up and essentially bond with this bromine. So a curved arrow is showing those electrons moving to form a bond with this bromine. And that then breaks the bond here, releasing this bromine with a negative charge. So this is essentially the first step that takes place. And at the end of that, I'll now have something that looks like this. A positive charge now exists on one of my two carbons, and this carbon is now connected to the bromine. This bromine that was released, now I'll show it again over here, it has several unbonded pairs of electrons. So this bromine is the bromine that was released here, and it now will be attracted. So again, I'm going to show a curved arrow and it will be attracted to that carbon and it will bond then in that location. So that's the next step in the mechanism. So I have bromine attached now to both of the carbons. And I don't need that, uh, that one there. So I summarized here sort of the stages that things go through. The halogen first becomes polarized, developing a slightly positive and negative charge. That then causes the formation of a bond between the, the, the electrophilic substance, the electrophilic bromine that's looking for a negative charges, and the bonded electrons here are then released, as shown in our curly arrows over here. Let's take a look now at another reaction, this time involving hydrogen bromide. 
So much the same, I begin with an approaching substance. This substance, however, already has the poles created in it. I don't need to induce them. They're already there. Hydrogen loses the tug of war for electrons. So this becomes slightly negative. This hydrogen slightly positive. So I don't even need to induce a charge. The bond breaks and will attach itself to that hydrogen and the electrons in the bond here will release and go with the bromine. So much as before. So CH2, CH, and I'll put the HBr down here. So the breaking of that bond to form a bond with the hydrogen and then those electrons release to go with the bromine. So I now form a temporary cation. And then my bromine with the extra electrons will be attracted then to that site. So much the same as before, but as I said, we don't need to induce um, the charge separation to create the positive um, species. Let's take a look now at a, another case. These are called unsymmetrical cases now, and there's a little addition we have to make to things. So, <clears throat> as before, let's take a look at our approaching substance. So it will approach like this, and we already know that this will develop a slightly positive charge, slightly negative, and that electrons will open up to hook up here, and this will leave. Now, this leads to a bit of a dilemma. The dilemma is when the electrons leave and hook up to this hydrogen, will it form a bond with hydrogen, will it bond with this, leaving a positive charge here, or will it hook up with this one and leave a positive charge here? I'll show you what I mean here in this diagram. So I have a possibility where the hydrogen could hook up to the first carbon, we'll call that one. The cation would exist here at the second carbon, still has that hydrogen, and then the CH3. So that's one possibility. The other possibility could be maybe the positive charge will reside here, and the hydrogen will hook up on the second carbon. And we have a molecule that looks like this. Which happens? Or do both happen? Well, both do happen, but one is preferred. It turns out that this is a more stable cation. The stability of cations, I can briefly show you here in this little diagram. We can see here that this species is the more stable of the three. It's a tertiary one, so its stability is the greatest. And over here, the primary tend to be the least stable cations. So this would be the preferred cation that would form. Scientist named Markovnikov came up with a rule that kind of governs this behavior. So if you can't remember the stability, you can remember Markovnikov's rule, which says that the hydrogen that will attach, it will attach to the carbon that already has the most hydrogens. So if we go back to our original molecule over here, I can see, it does the hydrogen go here, or does the hydrogen go here? Well, this one already has two hydrogens attached to it. This carbon only has one hydrogen attached to it. The rule, the hydrogen will attach to the carbon that has the most hydrogens. So this would be the preferred attachment, as that we've shown here. So, now that we've established that, we'll continue on with this product, because what will happen now is the um, bromine will hook on to that second carbon, so we'll have this structure with the bromine here, and the hydrogens here. and finish off with the methyl. So there's a little bit of a look at the mechanism that lies behind electrophilic addition reactions. In our next program, we'll take a look at the opposite of oxidation, reduction.